In this project, we focus on the task of cloth unfolding, where the objective is to maximize the coverage of the cloth. Because this unfolding reveals key features of the cloth, it is a common first step for most cloth manipulation pipelines. While the objective of cloth unfolding is simple, actually doing it well is not. This is because you can start off from cloth configurations that are severely crumpled. For instance, quasi-static pick-and-place interactions will not only require many interaction steps for these challenging cases, but will also struggle when the cloth corners aren't visible or when the cloth is larger than the robot's reach range. And despite the abundance of sophisticated methods for single-arm, quasi-static unfolding over the years, they typically only address the easy cases or take upwards of a hundred interactions for challenging cases, like this prior work here. Indeed, cloth unfolding is so challenging yet so crucial for downstream tasks that many cloth manipulation methods assume an unfolded initial state. Let's take a step back here and consider how you would make your bed in the morning. Would you pick each corner of the blanket up, then walk over to the corresponding corner of your bed to place it down? Probably not. Instead, you would use both of your hands, and with as little as a single high-velocity fling or two, you would be able to completely unfold your initially crumpled blanket. Dynamic actions play a crucial role in our everyday manipulation of deformable objects. Compared to quasi-static actions, dynamic actions have three desirable properties for unfolding deformable objects. First, they're efficient. With as little as one or two flings, the robot system could unfurl an initially crumpled cloth. Second, they expand the system's effective reach range. High-velocity flings and throws can move parts of the cloth the arm might not be able to physically reach. Third, they're generalizable. While quasi-static actions rely on strategically chosen pick-and-place points to unfold a cloth, a dynamic flinging policy instead relies on high velocities to do most of its work. This means that a dynamic action policy that is trained on one type of cloth, such as squared cloths, can generalize to different and more complex cloths, like shirts. We introduce Flingbot, a self-supervised algorithm which learns to unfold cloths with a pick, stretch, and fling primitive for a dual arm setup. It achieves over 80% coverage in three steps, works on cloths that are larger than its reach range, and generalizes to t-shirts while being only trained on rectangular cloths. In our experiments, we used two UR5 arms with the WSG50 and RG2 grippers placed on either side of a flat workspace. We used two RealSense RGBD cameras, one to take top-down images, whose frustrum is shown here in the dashed pink cone, and one to take a front view of the workspace. Our policy takes as input the top-down RGB image, then outputs the flinging action parameters. The dual arm system then executes the action with the help of the front view camera, then observes the delta coverage in the cloth as measured by the top-down camera. The entire system is trained in a self-supervised manner to take actions which maximizes the cloth's delta coverage. Our dynamic motion primitives involves first picking up the cloth, stretching it, flinging it with a high velocity, then placing it down. To perform this primitive, we need to choose where to pick, then how far to stretch, how fast to fling, then finally, where to place the cloth. However, for the task of cloth unfolding, there are some natural answers to these questions. For instance, we always want the cloth to be as stretched out as possible without actually tearing the cloth. And we'd always want to place the cloth down somewhere in the workspace where it's easy to reach the cloth again. In addition, we propose to fix the fling speed and instead focus on learning to choose two grass points. What we just did here is we've reduced the task of learning the parameters of this complex multi-step primitive to the much easier task of learning to find two good grass points. While dual arm grasping seems much more approachable, it still requires some careful thought. This is because there are two constraints we need to impose on the two arm grasp points. First, for the crossover constraint, we don't want the left and right arm to cross over each other and collide with each other. Instead, the arms should grasp the points that are closer to them. For the grasp width constraint, we don't want grasps that are too far apart so that the arms can't reach them, but also not so close that the arms could collide with each other. Given these two constraints, we want to design our action parameterization in a way that makes satisfying these constraints easy. If we want to get our two grasp points L and R for the left and right arm respectively, one obvious option is to directly predict L and R. This approach is simple because it only uses four scalars and intuitive because we directly get our two points. However, the two constraints we need to satisfy are now entangled with each other. 
Instead, we want a parameterization which allows us to more easily enforce these constraints. So another option is to think of L and R as a line, then predict the center point, the line rotation theta, and the grass width w. This parameterization is still simple and intuitive because we can recover L and R using simple trigonometry. But now, satisfying the two constraints is easy because the constraints are linear and independent on theta and w. You can satisfy the grass width constraint by directly constraining w, while you can constrain theta appropriately so that the right end of the line never crosses the vertical line, satisfying the crossover constraint. Now, given our parameterization, we need to think of how we can learn these parameters. One approach is to directly predict c, theta, and w. However, this ignores the structure of the task and the inductive bias we could add to the learning process. Specifically, for cloth unfolding, the best grasp points on a cloth for flinging has a few equivariances. First is equivariance to translation. This means that when the cloth shifts around in the workspace, the best grasp points shifts around with the cloth. The same is true for rotation and scale. For this last point about scale equivariance, while cloths of different sizes might have different masses and therefore may affect the fling speed, it should still not affect the best grasp points, which is what we're arguing here. So now that we've identified these three equivariances, we want to take advantage of them. To bake these equivariances into the learner, we learn translation, rotation, and scale invariant value networks. So, starting from a top-down RGB image of the workspace, we transform the observations to multiple rotations and scales. Here, the input image rotations corresponds to the varying grass rotations thetas, while the image scalings corresponds to the grass widths w's. Therefore, to satisfy the two constraints that we have, we can choose a discretized range of rotations and scaling factors to process the image, such that the value network only considers valid two-arm grasps. Then, we stack these transformed observations together and pass them through a convolutional value network, which outputs a stack of value maps. Since each pixel in each value map corresponds to the predicted delta coverage of a valid two-arm grasp, we can find the flinging action with the highest value, then execute it. By its architecture, the convolutional value network's best grasp prediction is translationally equivariant to the cloth. By our design of scaling and rotating the input image, the value network is also rotationally and scale equivariant. We evaluate our approach on novel configurations of three types of cloths. First are normal rectangular cloths, which are used to measure the policy's typical efficiency. Second are rectangular cloths that are larger than the reach range of the system and are used to measure the policy's effective reach range. Third are shirts, which are not seen during training and are used to measure the policy's generalization abilities. Now we show some results from the real-world experiments. Here, we show the quasi-static pick-and-place baseline on the left, compared to Flingbot on the right on normal rectangular cloths. And here are the results for large rectangular cloths. And here are the results for shirts. Quantitatively, Thingbot is not only more efficient, but it also reaches coverages that are not reachable by the quasi-static baselines, even with many more interaction steps. In simulation, we compare it against two quasi-static baselines, which are pick and drag and pick and place. Here, Flingbot reaches over 80% coverage within three steps on normal rectangular cloths, while the baseline plateaus at around 60%. We also include a variant of our approach that learns the fling speed, called Flingbot S. However, we see that Flingbot S is not much better than Flingbot, so we prefer the simpler Flingbot. We've presented Flingbot, a self-supervised algorithm which learns to unfold cloths with a pick, stretch, and fling primitive for a dual-arm setup. Perhaps what was most surprising is that even without explicit modeling and estimating of the cloth states, and without any complex learning strategy, Flingbot is able to do so well. The simplicity of our approach really demonstrates the effectiveness of two-arm dynamic actions for the task of cloth unfolding. 
Further, our action parameterization not only leads to independent and linear constraints on the grass line rotations and scales, but also allows us to learn value networks which explore translational, rotational, and scale equivariances of the problem structure. Now we show more Flingbot results. Please check out our website for paper, code, data links, and more results. Thanks for watching.